Hey everyone, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what I've been working on this week. Before we get into the regular Whip It Wednesday items, I just wanted to let you guys know, please hang out till the end, and I have something I'd like to show you. On this week's live stream, Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern, we're not going to do the standard live stream where we're going to make a quilt block, but I'm going to do another one of my live sales. And live sale is just where I bring in the items that I have here in my home that I've been creating over the last year or so, a couple of years, and then I put them on sale. And then you guys can choose if you'd like to purchase any of them. I have them listed in a number system, and I just show them during the live stream, number one. And if you want it, you're like, I'll take number Number one, I'll take number two. I add your name down and then you pay through PayPal. I'll get more into that on Friday, but at the end of this video, I wanted to give you guys a preview because I know not everyone can make it to the live streams. If there's something you'd like, go ahead and send me an email. I do require that payment is received within 24 hours. It just makes it easier so I'm not hunting people down or waiting for payments. And if more than one person wants it, I'm not holding on to something that someone decides they changed their mind later on. So all that will be at the end of this video. So thanks for hanging out with me on the last tutorial where we made the frying pan handle covers. I just struggle with that name. It just doesn't really flow as you're speaking it. I have a very limited amount of things that I've actually physically made this week because I was doing a lot of different things like cleaning out the scraps and stuff that I have. A few people were very generous and sent me some scraps so I had to sort through them like I did last previous weekend when I talked to you guys last week. I finished up another box. This one was a little bit larger so it took me a little bit longer to go through and I still have one more laundry basket and that is actually my fault because as I have things that don't really quite go anywhere, I just kept tossing them into this laundry basket. So I really need to sort it out and put everything in a place and just finally decide what I'm going to do with the, I call them novelty scraps just because they're not solid colors or anything. And while these aren't novelty scraps, they still kind of fit into that category, except the blue and the red would go in my blue and red bin. But I have these and while they're not novelty because they're not like flying pigs and, and donuts or something like that, they still don't quite fit into any categories. I did make some fabric postcards and I will pop the little video I did ahead of time here. I had an enjoyable afternoon working on some fabric postcards. I'm sending out a couple as thank you, some hello, how you doing, haven't heard from you in a while, happy birthday, and just, uh, you know, checking in, seeing how you're doing, making sure the world's okay, and I thought it'd be fun to make some in just solid colors. Then I got a little crazy, and I started playing. I had a strip of this fabric that was sent to me, isn't that beautiful, those flowers? There's just enough to make two. I received some Snoopy fabric and I got to thinking, what is one of the things about fabric postcards that I enjoy? You can do anything you want. Little Woodstock's down there. So that means I should have done my top stitching in yellow, but instead I used this fun line green. Well, mostly for lazy reasons because it was in my sewing machine at the time from making these cards, but I really loved the way it looked. And I thought, you know what? It doesn't have to match. It doesn't have to be exact. It's a fabric postcard. These two pieces and these two pieces were already sewn together. I thought since there's green in there, I brought the green out and I just loved the way that looked, which also allowed me to use the green thread again. I received some of the scraps. It's uh, silky, almost reminds me of like jammy pants or something, that really silky material. So it's the kind of thing you can't put the iron down on. And I didn't sew through it, I just sewed over through here. But I thought the octopus with all the little ballet shoes on, well, it was just too sweet to not use for something. And then it had this part in it also, lots of ballet. And then it had this flower and the heart. Brought in some pink. Now this is again fabric that's not quite quilting cotton, but for fabric postcards, it doesn't matter. 
again, it doesn't matter. Isn't it kind of fun to have something that's tactile? Nice and textured. And of course, I'll have to hit that with a lint roller because it got fuzzies everywhere. I had enough for two. And I measured it and it's gonna go through the post office no problem. It's still less than a quarter of an inch. This was the duvet cover that was trimmed up for repair, something I don't remember. You know, my memory is horrible, but there was a Snoopy duvet cover. This is flannel from flannel jammies or lounge pants or whatever. So I thought that worked good together. And then just a full on Snoopy of that same material. Because you can't let that go. You can't just toss it in the trash. Even though it's a small amount, why not make a greeting card or a fabric postcard out of it? Now, while all of these are really fun, I enjoyed making all of them. I love the roses. I love the fire. Orange, I've just been into orange a lot lately. The green and the purple. This Snoopy is adorable. And I don't know. Can you go wrong with sock monkeys? So if you're gonna make some fabric postcards, just have some fun, grab some scraps. You can't make it wrong. As long as it doesn't fall apart and it goes through the mail however you wanna send it, whether you use a clear envelope like I do, or you wanna tuck it in with a birthday package, or you just put it in a regular envelope, take some of your fun scraps and just create something. You may not know what to do with the fabric, but once you start mixing it together, it's fun. Oh, this here, this is flannel too, because flannel works great on a fabric postcard. On one of the quilt trunk shows, I showed you the O Cheerio baby quilt that I had made many, many years ago. I had won this, was my very first jelly roll that I won, and I wanted to turn it into a baby quilt. So I took those two and a half inch strips and then I cut them all into squares and stitched them together into a baby quilt. Now here is some of it. I've been cutting it apart. I actually just laid my ruler down, decided on the size, and I just cut it. So after this is quilted and everything, I'll trim it up nice and neat so there aren't those seams there. But these two panels are going to be a quilt. No, they're not gonna be a quilt. They were already a quilt. These two panels are gonna be a quilted tote bag. Fair warning, if you're interested in purchasing any of these items I'm gonna show you really soon in the shop, they aren't perfect. When you look at it, I just see all the fun bright colors and I don't mind, it's really weird, I was thinking about it this morning, I don't mind if a smaller project doesn't have seams that match up, but a quilt, I want the seams to match and that just makes no sense because the bigger the project, the less you're gonna notice it. But let me just show you what I mean. You guys know what it means when the points don't and the corners don't match up. So you see how these don't match up perfectly right there? So this is going to be a tote bag. I think I cut these at 18 inches. Give or take a little, they're about 18 inches. So when it's done, I think it'll be quilted up and it'll be closer to maybe towards 17 inches, 16 and a half when I trim it up. I just wanted to cut it on the seams instead of like cutting it there. And once it's quilted, I'll do all of my really matchstick tight quilting in it and then go from there. So I have this ready to go. And in that box of scraps that I recently went through, someone was very sweet and sent me this yellow, I think it would be considered checkered. I don't think it might be gingham, I don't know, plaid, whatever. It's just really pretty yellow fabric and I thought it went really nice. So this will be my lining fabric. Now the baby quilt was more like 36 by 36, give or take here or there. So there was some extra along the top and the edge on both of the panels from the tote bag. So I made some zipper pouches. Again, these aren't quite perfect. I noticed when I was doing the quilting about a quarter of an inch on either side of the seam that they're a little bit this way and then they don't all line up. But again, I think they look really nice and I don't really notice it and it doesn't bother me. I didn't want to use all of the fabric up and just make two pouches and have it, you know, the same fabric on both sides. So let me show you what I did on this little guy. I was first thinking they might end up being coin pouches, but I think they're still a pretty good size pouch. 
they're about seven this way and five this way. I went ahead and I put this fun fabric on the back. Nice little green zipper. And then I have that yellow fabric on the inside. And I believe I had enough to put it on on the inside of all of these zipper pouches. I cut out the one for the tote bag first because that one was most important and made sure it was larger than the pieces that I cut out so there wouldn't be any issues. This one, yellow zipper, yep, yellow plaid check gingham is on the inside, and there is the same there. Oh, yep, I did the same on all four, look at that. So they all have the same backing and the same lining fabric. And for those that are curious about making bags, what I did with this is I took the Patrick piece and I put it on a piece of cotton batting. And as I mentioned, I did the stitching on each side of the seams this way and this way. But on the back, because I didn't want to quilt the solid piece of fabric, I used fusible fleece back here. So I thought by using the cotton batting on the front, it gives it that nice little squishy quilted feeling. And with the fusible fleece on the back, that means I don't have to quilt it because it's fused completely in there. Everything is held in with the seams. And with a small project like this, I don't worry about quilting all the way through it. I think for maybe a wall hanging or something, that's when I quilt all the way through. Fusible fleece is great for that. Even if you put it on the front of the quilt and on the backing, if you want something a little bit thicker. But I like that it has that little bit of a soft feel to it, yet it still has a bit of structure to it. So there is your little tip about making zipper pouches. Now for future projects, I still have this quilt too, that I was making this quilt for myself. And again, I only need to have so many quilts, but I thought this would be fun for a, a beach tote bag, a summery fun, Hawaiian looking, tropical type tote bags. So I do have a large quilt here, probably a lap size, 60 by 70 by whatever, who knows. It's folded four times. So I thought that would be fun to go ahead and turn that into a, probably a couple tote bags, maybe a one tote bag and a sewing machine mat and some zipper pouches. So that's going to be the next project after I get done with that tote bag. I'll go ahead and start turning this into something. I love making the quilts. I just don't have the need for them. I don't have the people to constantly be gifting them to. And to sell them in the shop, the fabric you choose is very important. Not everyone's going to like everything. To have something in their home, they want it to match their decor or they want it to be what their kids are interested in. Like whatever the favorite TV characters are right now, I can never keep up. The old school ones like Scooby-Doo are always still popular. But what a tote bag or a sewing machine mat or little zipper pouches even just a small wall hanging, that still kind of goes with home decor, but you can usually get away with things that are a bit brighter and a bit different than what the person originally had intended for their home. All of that to say, I can have the fun of making a quilt without making a quilt. The other thing that I saw in those scrap boxes is there are a, I think a yardage of some panels and some of the yardage that has the rows that go across. So it had this fun mannequin fabric with the dresses on it. I thought that that one would be fun for just a fabric postcard because it's just that little bit cut out. But this piece is about six inches wide and I thought if I added some red to where you could see there was that burgundy red up there, if I could find a red that kind of matches or even just another tan creamy color, or I can even just go with black, but I think the red or the browns and stuff would look better, I can turn this into a zipper pouch. Whether it's two small ones like this or it's one longer one, maybe just up to here. And then again, take these three and do like that one. I could bulk that out and turn it into a zipper pouch or coin pouch, but I think it's nice too to have some as fabric postcards. I have more yardage of this, as I said, in the rows. So I do have some more of that to go ahead and play with. And then there in the panels, I don't know which dresses they are. I'd have to look at it, but there's like one big pillow size panel piece 
that has one of the dresses in it, whether it's one of each or just a couple of them, I don't remember. So I thought that was really fun. Thank you so much for sharing your fun fabric with me. I am definitely going to have fun playing with it and make some exciting things for the shop. Okay, so your scrappy word for today, let's go with variety. We all have a variety of things in our lives. We have a variety of crafts that we love. We have a variety of fabrics that we're drawn to and a variety of things that we enjoy making. And even though I love making the zipper pouches, I do have a variety of shapes and sizes. Well, this part of the video is in perfect order for everything you've been watching. I am actually recording this afterwards. Do you ever tell yourself mentally over and over again, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, write yourself a note, say it 10 minutes before you leave the house to go to the store or something, don't forget, don't forget. And then when you're done and you come home from the grocery store or you finish recording a video and you're like, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot. So I wanna let you guys know of a new thing that I have going on. I was contacted by a company that they do email subscriptions. You guys know I don't send out emails saying what I'm doing and what sales I'm having or what I've made this week because I'm here on YouTube telling you. But YouTube in the past, if you set it up with notifications, you would get an email every time a YouTube channel would post a video. So when you see this Whip It Wednesday video comes up on Wednesday at 9 a.m., YouTube would automatically send you an email and say, hey, our silent crafts posted a video, come check it out. But they don't do that anymore. So this company came to me and they're like, you want to try out our new email subscription thing for YouTube? And I'm like, yes, please, because I know several of you have missed receiving the emails. And many of you are like, Robin, I didn't get that video. I haven't seen you post it in a while. Where have you been? I'm here all the time posting videos, at least two a week, if not some more, now that I do the bonus videos. But they offer an email subscription service. It is totally free to you. The very first link in the description box below this video, it's called A Weber, I believe. If I'm wrong, I'll put it down here. But if you click on that link, it'll take you to a page and it'll something along the lines of, hey, you want to subscribe to our Silent Crafts? It's got a pink flamingo. You just put in your email address and that signs you up totally for free, no charge for you. This company, I have triple checked. I talked to my representative or whatever you want to call them checked all the fine prints as best as I could they do not sell your email address you will not get spam they say that I don't like to say this but they'll they told me that I own your email address which doesn't sound right to me but it means that I'm the only person that gets your email addresses. They use them to notify you when YouTube says I post a video, but they do not use your emails for any other purposes. But you know, take that at face value. If you're uncomfortable with it, you do not have to use it. You are still gonna see me in your list here on YouTube of your subscriptions when I put up videos. But if you'd like to get notified when I pop up the random ones each week, because I'm trying to have them come up on different days and different times of the day, just to see what works good here on YouTube. Plus, I don't want you guys to always expect one because you don't get one every week, as you've noticed. So this is a great way for you to get a notification when the live streams come up, because sometimes YouTube doesn't tell us about live streams. I don't want to go on and on. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. But the very first link, it's going to stay as the first link down there in the description box so you guys can easily find it. I'm going to be adding it over onto the About page here on my YouTube channel just so that there is a variety of different places that you can find it. Okay, back to your regular viewing. I hope you guys hang out to the end of this video. Even if you don't want to watch it, if you could just please let it play. That way YouTube doesn't get upset with me because you guys left in the middle of a video. Go ahead and grab something to drink, get a snack, do a little bit of sewing, and then when the video is over, you can just go ahead and just shut it off. Thank you so much if you let it keep running. I'm going to run through this real quick. You guys will be able to see them a little bit longer and a little bit better when we get to Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern for the live stream. I have these jar openers that I made, so there is a variety of them. You'll get all of the prices, and you can ask questions if you need to next week. Again, if there's something you want, just go ahead and email me at the rsislandcrafts at gmail.com, which is always down below in the description box. That was number one. Number two, I'm just 
grouping things so they might not be individually but I have these mug rugs so we have the Easter ones remember when we made these egg ones I have one heart left over then we have some of the Christmas ones. A lot of times I either put these in the shop or some of these just never made it into the shop for Christmas depending on when they were created. Then we have the autumn ones that we did. I don't remember if I did them with you or with my patrons, but these were really fun to work on. I have one of those matching games. Again, a video that I worked on. I think someone requested these and then decided that they weren't going to get them. So they all have this alligator type fabric on the back. And then on the inside, there's a whole bunch of different novelty fabrics for the matching game. When we were working on the trees, I have this little mini quilt. Number five, one of those snap bags with the vinyl. Cows, pink and purple and then a Halloween version. Number nine is these mini drawstring bags. So there's roses, dolphins, and owls, bugs in a jar, and the flowers on purple. Number 11 is a large drawstring bag. Number 12 is the diamond engagement rings. It's a little snap bag for like cross stitch projects, that type of bag. Here is the tortilla warmer. I didn't bother putting this in the shop because I knew I was going to be doing this live sale. Now these items are going to be on a discount. They're not gonna be the same price as they were in the shop. Some of them are gonna be 50% or more of a discount and others of them, it all depends. I mean, sometimes if I sell something for $8 in the shop, I might put it here for like $5 or something like that. I have all of these pot holders that have that, uh, yeah, that stuff in it. The crunchy stuff that keeps it from the heat resistant. I always forget the name. Remember when we made it the quilted Halloween tote bags? Number 16, number 17, number 18. I'm pretty sure these are on a good discount and number 19. So these are all quilted and they are a good size. And look, they even have a pocket in them. Here's another one. This is just a fabric. So there's no batting or stabilizer interfacing or anything on it. So it's just some pumpkins. This is one of those baskets, like the Easter basket, but this has got the hot peppers on it. Oh, these are number 10. Let's see what we have in here. These are more drawstring bags. These are just the two pieces of fabric. So there's flowers with the pink bottom. Little devils. I have one, two of the rainbow skulls. And this one, Spiders with Eyeballs. Very descriptive names that I give them. 24, this one has the foam in it, so it's got the zipper pouch. They're more of a pyramid, rounded, whatever type shape. That's when I decided I don't like working with the foam and I switched over to batting. So these are the 30s fabrics. They all stand up like this. They've just been in the Rubbermaid tub for a bit, so they do fold, fold all. They have folded over a little bit, but put something in it like a rolled up towel and give it a little steam from your iron and they all pop back. 23, 25 is peachy, and then blue for number 22. I can't remember if we made these with, I don't remember if I made this with you guys or with the patrons or I just made it, but here's a little sand castle with some beach fabric inside, number 21. It's just a quilted little bucket container. We made the coffee cup sleeves, so I have peppers and batiks and then scraps and more peppers and more batiks. If you've been here for a bit, you might remember these pouches. I call everything a pyramid pouch. These just kind of stick up. Oh, this is like those popcorn pouches, I think they were calling them. But they have the little part here that you could hook onto a backpack or something like that. They are two pieces of fabric with some lightweight stabilizer in between, it feels like. You can actually put 
a cell phone in there. These are quite big and everything like that. So we've got some caterpillars and other critters. Rainbow computer, computer virus. Let's go bananas. And then this one's the farms with the baba -ba and the moo cows and the tweet tweets. Pink front and zipper pouch. I know we did a video with that. And then there's also that one. This one is a cusseted bottom, so it's a large quilted bag. Good for knitting projects or whatever. And then here's a little boxy pouch. This one just has the stabilizer in it, and it's got the feathers. I believe this is a Dr. Seuss fabric. And these, I don't think you guys have ever seen, but they are headbands. So they have the two pieces of fabric I don't think they have any stabilizer in them. And then it has the elastic on the back, so it is reversible. That part just got scrunched up and looked weird for a second. There we go. It's got a wide piece of uh, probably one inch elastic in there, so it has that. There is the music and the polka dots. And then there's a Christmas one with uh, snowmen that sparkle on this side and then just the penguins on the other. I haven't done a video for this and I added it to my list because I haven't done a video for these. These are the, feels like it's got the fusible fleece in it. Everything will of course get defuzzed before I go out. Nope, this is quilt batting. So this is quilt batting, but they don't feel like they're quilted. They don't look like they're quilted. So these are the project bags with a handle. So number 37 is the cars. And then we have snowflakes, the ugly sweaters, the snowmen, and the Coca-Cola sleds. Got a nice little mountain going over there. I did the Polaroid blocks with my patron. So this is a little mini wall hanging, number 43. I love that fabric on the back. And this one is the postage stamps using the fun novelty fabrics, number 42, with just a light blue on the back. I was thinking Christmas in July. <laughs> so yeah, there are some Christmas things, but here's the last of it. These are the monster wall hangings that if you hang it up in your kid's room or your grandkid's room, it scares away the monsters. I was playing with some names, but many of them are already taken. I was thinking Monster Protection Society or something like that. But I think that's like a TV cartoon or something. But we've got the green guy with the Olympic rings. Pink guy on black and white, 44, 45. These are just eyeballs on polka dot. And then this fun guy on gray. I have some large Christmas stockings, number 48 and 49. These are quilt as you go, so they have quilting on the front. And just fabric on the back, so here's the big candy canes. Now these guys are nice and tall, they're 16 inches tall. Now I know I worked on this with you guys. The, there's a video for this one. This is a stocking with a zipper pouch. So you can put some candy or treats or money or whatever in there. We have a good variety of these. Stockings, flamingos, blue poinsettias, snowmen, green poinsettias, more of that Coca-Cola sled, silver poinsettias, Coca-Cola with the tree. I love that fabric poinsettias on black, and then I have two of these velvet ones. And number 51 is the last run of stockings. These are just two fabrics, so they're just quick little stockings. Snowmen, gingerbread houses, gingerbread men, and trees. I know I rushed through that, but you'll see them better on Friday when we do the live stream. You can always stop me and ask a question. You can email me. Thank you for making it all the way to the end, even if you just let it run while you went to the restroom or got a snack. Whew. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.